Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors. And today we're going to look at five games that were arcade spin-offs that came to the Dreamcast. These games are classic arcade games that took the world by storm. Some of these games have an element of the classic game built into it, or some of these are just classic reworkings of the same game. We're going to start off first with Hubert. Developer Art Tech Studio released November 30th, 2000 and sold 27,000 units. Originally released in 1982 in arcades as a stand-up cabinet, then ported to the Atari and Intellivision in 1983, the Dreamcast version of Qbert was only ever released in North America as the Hasbro trilogy of games, another one of which is included in this list, so stay tuned. The Qbert remake also appeared on the PlayStation, PC, Mac OS, and Game Boy Color. Qbert introduces three game modes, Adventure, Classic, and Head to Head. Adventure mode brings Qbert's gameplay in a 3D environment, divided into four worlds with power-ups and still delivers the classic feel. Classic mode is as exactly as it was before on the Atari 2600. One added bonus is that you can access the classic game right off the bat. Centipede, developer Leaping Lizard Software, released November 1999 and sold 102,000 units. Centipede is a shoot 'em up 3D remake of the super popular 1981 classic of the same name. Originally designed and programmed by Ed Logg and Donna Bailey in the coin-op division of Atari and Centipede for the Dreamcast, there are two main modes, Arcade and Adventure Mode. In Arcade is your standard game and is basically unchanged from its original arcade outing. Adventure Mode, on the other hand, is a 3D imagining of Centipede. Adventure Mode adds a story to the overall storyless Centipede. You know, everybody always wants to know the backstory of Centipede. Adventure Mode has you controlling a bug killer, and your task is to destroy the bug invasion and save all of humanity. Adventure Mode features solid high tempo music, a full 3D environment, 3D ships and enemy types, various camera angles, weapon upgrades, but retains the classic enhanced sounds. Another solid point is that you can access Arcade Mode or Classic Mode right off the bat. There's no unlocking or no need to unlock it. You can play it right off the bat and get right into it right away, which is an added bonus in my opinion because the 3D environments, though pretty decent, if you only play an overhead view, uh, in my opinion, you can't get into the first person view. It's a little bit too tight. The camera's too tight, too many things to bump into or kill you from behind. So an over the top look is the only way to play this game in adventure mode. But to play the classic mode with that same feel is an added bonus. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. Developer Namco Home Tech released November 13th, 2000 and sold 106,000 units. Miss Pac-Man's Maze Madness is a 3D puzzle game that stays fairly true to its arcade classic. Your goal is to clear each board of pellets while avoiding obstacles and ghosts. Miss Pac-Man's gameplay is broken down into story mode and classic. Story mode has you tracking down four jewels that must be obtained before the evil Mesmeralda. It features local multiplayer and can be played with up to four players. Miss Pac-Man's classic mode can be quickly accessed from the main menu for those who don't want to endure the single player to unlock it. This is a bonus onto itself and still feels great. Miss Pac-Man received positive reviews for its story and classic modes. Story mode's level design is well made and is overall cute. While I was playing story mode, I couldn't stop playing. I just kept on playing and playing and playing. It's just added so much element to a basic Pac-Man game. So there's little story boards or little boards that you have must clear and you can only advance by figuring out the certain puzzles that are in that board while all avoiding the ghosts at the same time. And it's, it's a little cute gameplay element that I really did enjoy. Playing it was so much fun and I enjoyed it. It's, it's a really, really good game, well balanced, and the puzzles are simple enough for anybody to get into. Gauntlet Legends, developer Atari Games, released October 1998 in arcades and May 30th, 2000 on the Dreamcast and sold 82,000 units. Originally released in arcades, Gauntlet Legends is a part of the long historic Gauntlet franchise. Gauntlet is a hack and slash dungeon crawler that pits eight heroes against hordes of undead and demons. Originally ported to the N64 in 1999, it was the first of the three consoles to support four players using the N64 expansion pack, while the Sega Dreamcast allowed four players right out of the gate. PlayStation only allowed two players. <laughs> you have the ability to choose your hero and level them up to max level 99 by gaining experience through slain enemies, 
your abilities grow through four traits, strength, speed, armor, and magic. Gauntlet of Legends features highly addictive gameplay. While I was playing through this, I was really addicted to the gameplay and just going through and hacking and slashing and taking down enemy hordes and just progressing and leveling up your character because that happens right on screen so you don't have to wait till the end where your experience is tallied at the end. It instead is tallied in game and it's a really add nice added bonus because you get that little has gained a level. The Dreamcast version is a more faithful port of the arcade version. It also features some of Gauntlet Dark Legacy's added characters, combo systems, and team-up combos while playing with a friend. One thing I did wish that while playing this game, uh, the maps are not huge per se, but I do wish that there was a map system on screen that you could see if you visited a certain area. So much like any other hack and slash game, you could actually see where you've been, where it, the map lights up or grays out in certain areas you haven't been into. That's one thing I kind of did wish because the only way to realize which way you've gone is areas that you've collected chests and stuff like that. So when you're in areas, you don't know exactly where you're missing a key or where you're missing an area or a button press to advance into the level. So that was one thing I wish that there was a little mini map on the bottom of the screen that you could actually see that. So I that's one little gripe of this game, but overall it's highly addictive and super fun. And last but not least, Mr. Driller. Developer Namco released November 1999 in arcades and June 23rd, 2000 on Dreamcast and sold 8,500 units. Originally stated to be the third entry to the arcade smash hit Dig Dug, Mr. Driller is an action puzzler that requires you to remove color blocks by creating a cascade effect matching four or more same color blocks. You are scored based on how deep you can get. You play as Susumu Hori the son of Taizo Hori, the main character of Dig Dug. While you're eliminating blocks and digging deeper and deeper, your fear isn't quite just being squished by falling blocks, but also running out of oxygen. A gauge is constantly diminishing, and you must also keep an eye open for oxygen tanks scattered through the mix. Those are five games that still feature an element of their classic arcade game, whether it's Centipede, to Miss Pac-Man, to Dig Dug in Mr. Driller. These five games give you the ability to have that little bit of old style arcades in your own house. Please let me know what you guys think. Have you guys played any of the classics in arcades or if you have played any of these on the Dreamcast? Please let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.